while Adam and uh, Matthew are getting seated, you know, I'll, I'll point out, you know, the, the, the growth of the startup community, if you look back to 20, 15, Kansas City was recognized in the top five emerging global entrepreneurial ecosystems. So that growth is there. And then there was a recent uh, Kaufman study. I was trying to find it to get the numbers exactly, but Kansas City made an 11 point jump in startup activity um, to, I think, 29th now. Are you familiar with that number, Adam? Um, yeah, we just made an 11 point jump. I think it was to 16. Um, of the top 50 metros in terms of our startup activity, which is pretty impressive. This yeah. last year, we jumped a bunch of cities that are larger to, than us. Wow. So, okay. yeah. Well, so with that, Matthew uh, and Adam. Changing hats here. Uh, thank you, uh, Matthew and Adam, for uh, you are going to be presenting the Kansas City Startup Foundation presentation, correct? Yep, that's correct. All right. Take it away. All right. Thanks so much for having us. Uh, we truly appreciate the opportunity to present to you all and have a conversation. So I'm Matthew Marcus. I am the executive director for the Kansas City Startup Foundation, also a co-leader for the Kansas City Startup Village, uh, which will make sense uh, a bit more about what that is here soon. Uh, to my right is Adam Arredondo. He is uh, the director of entrepreneurship for SEED, that's C-E-E-D, -E Center of Entrepreneurial Ecosystem Development. He's also the vice chairman uh, for the board of directors for the Kansas City Startup Foundation uh, and a fellow Kansas City Startup Village co-leader. So um, yeah, before we dive into our presentation, I just want a couple uh, pre-points, I guess. Um, one is we realize our time today is short with you. Um, and so we really just want this to be kind of the, the beginning of a continual dialogue uh, about what we're, you know, our mission and our vision and what we're doing. Um, so we're excited to, to see where the conversations lead. Uh, we also are excited to have this as an interactive discussion, so we're going to keep our presentation somewhat short because, honestly, we could talk for hours and hours about all this stuff, but we really want to hear what you guys think um, and where you go. And uh, on that point, we, ha we kind of have two narratives to our story. Uh, it will begin with the Kansas City Startup Village, uh, but it'll lead into the Kansas City Startup Foundation. Um, the efforts of the foundation came from the village, but I just want to kind of set the... Um, the uh, groundwork for understanding there is a difference between the two. And uh, Adam, do you have any other points you want to? No, I'd just say, you know, it's exciting to see where, you know, so much of the things we're seeing um, happening in KC with Tech Week and One Million Cups at the startup or at Kauffman Foundation and Sprint Accelerator. And, and none of these things existed five years ago, mm -hmm. right? Google Fiber came and everyone's like, Oh my gosh! Let's you know let's start doing stuff, uh -huh. and I think today is a really cool opportunity for us to begin to get on the same page with you all, to really help explain what's happening from the ground, and then start to understand tools and mechanisms the city has and other leaders in the community to really find ways to translate between our two worlds and find ways to really fuel it. So hopefully, again, today is just the start of a larger dialogue. Yeah. And on that note, uh, we're super appreciative of uh, Mr. Usher behind us for helping to make this happen. Um, and we're excited to have him actually on the uh, board of directors for a Kansas City Startup Foundation as well as a new member, uh, because obviously he brings a great passion to this startup and entrepreneurship movement in Kansas City and also great expertise. So good to have you aboard. OK, so let's jump into it. Um, it starts with uh, a story about the village again, what's where we'll begin our story. Um, you know, late 2011, uh, there was one, so, sorry, quick step uh, back. Kansas City Startup Village is centered around 45th and State Line, which you probably realize is a small commercial district. Um, and there was literally one tech entrepreneur entre you know, operating in there, kind of solo, doing his thing. Um, and then, um, basically, th within a matter of a few weeks, in late 2012, three properties came online with startup activity at about half a block of one another, uh, and of course, the first neighbor in the world to get Google Fiber without any planning. So there's a lot to digest in that kind of short summary of the village, but I think the most important piece to take away is that there was a lot of serendipity involved with the formation of the village. There was no grand master architect who said, if X happens, Y will happen, and Z will happen, and, and it'll be amazing. But um, but literally, a lot of serendipity. Uh, these three properties, we had about five or six startups come in. Um, and of course, you've got um, Google Fiber who comes in as well. And it's just kind of a little, uh, literally a little magical situation, um, which 
um, became has become something really fantastic for Kansas City. Uh, so again, and just yeah. just so you know, we we didn't realize what the setup would be. So some of what we're referring to is kind of up on the screen here, and didn't think to didn't think it's, to, to it's down yeah, there too. Got here. Oh, you can see it. We yeah. can see yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. That's good. Okay. So, um, yeah, so here, this is a map of the village uh, to give you a little perspective on its location and its kind of um, reach, so to speak. Um, you can see a lot of the pins mark uh, homes or properties that are, have startup activity that we consider part of the village. Uh, there's, of course, a dense um, population of them around 45th and State Line. Uh, but this just gives you an understanding of where it is, but also the potential of getting of what it could be in the future. Yeah, no worries. Um, so that's kind of fun. Um, and this is a map online. You, of course, could zoom in and, and really get involved if, if you want later. Um, so the impact of the village, again, um, when it started, we didn't really realize what it was or what it could be. But the, the numbers are starting to speak for themselves. So almost four years later, uh, and it eb has ebbed and flowed. I think that the height uh, in 2012 or, or 2014 or so, we had um, about 15 properties, 30 plus startups uh, in the village. But current numbers, we talk about, uh, we have 14 properties that um, are part, you know, participants in the village. Uh, throughout the course of the village, we've had 51 startups kind of come and go through the program. Uh, you can see 28 are still active, working on their, uh, their startups and, and businesses. Um, nine have moved for various reasons. Eight have failed. We all know that sometimes startups fail. But the, the number that we like to point out is the graduate number. And that is literally startups that came in that could have been a two- or three-person team that literally expanded beyond the, the infrastructure that the village could support. And so one would be iVerify, which is now uh, in the um, Think Big down in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. And they're doing amazing things. So good stuff there. Uh, jobs created. Obviously, a number of jobs have been created through these startups. Um, talent. Um, the, the village has really uh, realized a lot of exposure, not just, na not just locally, regionally, nationally, but also internationally. And we've literally had uh, individuals come from 15 different states to be a part of the village and thus a part of our uh, Kansas City startup community. Um, funding is, a, of course, an important part of uh, startup uh, development and growth. Uh, and thankfully, a number of the companies in the village have literally attracted the investment, um, uh, you know, funding from investors uh, locally and regionally as well. And a point, a point on that real quick that's kind of cool to see is up until recently, there was nobody paid to actually lead the village. It was all volunteer. And yet you're kind of seeing these numbers. And I think one of the big things that kind of that we can paint the picture for is imagine if we can find ways to actually make it sustainable and make it somebody's job to do this work that we can start to cause to, you know, understand that the impact can be even greater. So that's right. That's a good point. Um, and then last, of course, but not least, uh, over 4,000 individuals have come through the village to re literally learn about this small uh, startup neighborhood um, and learn about entrepreneurship. And, you know, we've had politicians from uh, mayors to council members to um, senators, governors, you know, all the way up uh, come and see about what this village is all about. Um, foreign delegates, uh, we have a good relationship with Global Ties KC, who has, of course, has a relationship with the U.S. State Department, and they often bring in foreign delegations, and they always contact us and say, hey, can we bring them through the village? They want to learn more about entrepreneurship. So 85 countries or so have been represented, um, so that's really fun. Media, you can see a list of the media that uh, the village has acquired over the years. Um, none of that is paid media, which is um, kind of interesting. Literally, they are so interested in what we're doing here in Kansas City that they contact us to write about the story. Um, students, we love welcoming students. Entrepreneurship is uh, something that, of course, we need to um, build from the ground up or continue to build. And uh, we often welcome students in for tours and, of course, panels. So we'll literally talk about entrepreneurship, um, and they always have a great uh, experience. Uh, corporate execs, of course, the corporate, um, uh, the corporate world has a big part in a startup ecosystem, and so we love to get them involved and, and show them what's up. And then, you know, VIPs, we've had um, uh, Steve Case with the founder of AOL come through, Scott O'Hanion, founder of Reddit, a few others um, who really have enjoyed learning about what's going on. Anything to add? Yeah. So... So, click again. so the big thing is, um, you know, the village is, uh, has always been this is grassroots, entrepreneur-led, volunteer effort um, that 
people, as you can see, can't get enough of. And, and a couple of years ago, about two years in, we knew we needed to do something to provide some structure. And we really debated, do we make the village something formal or do we create something new? Um, and we were seeing the growing impact of the village. Um, but it was just one little piece of this community, as you guys are learning about. And so what we decided to do was create a nonprofit to really support these grassroots efforts across Kansas City and kind of unify and champion that community with the village being an example of the type of activities that we that we support. So um, we started a nonprofit, a 501c3, to unify and champion this kind of grassroots community and really begin to be that voice and that organizer to help do things like this, right, is help how do we translate this world that has been described to us as Keystone Cops mm -hmm. to uh, show a little bit more structure and dedicated people to do the work that um, we really need to see for you all to make decisions to say, all right, we're going to support and you're the person that's going to be it as opposed to we're going to support and Ooh. who the heck is going to do the work, right? right. So, so that's what the, what the foundation is all about, right? It's about unifying and championing this community. And then ultimately the vision is to create the most entrepreneurial city in America, right? I mean, that's, everyone's talking about it, but ultimately it, it takes, you know, we need to unify what all of us talk about. I mean, the village has been talked about by both mayor and both state of the government addresses. It's been all over the place. People love talking about it, but how do we support it? That's, that's what this is all about. That's right. So real quick, um, we talk about ecosystem all the time. Um, you may or may not have any idea what that really means. But basically, really simply, it's just all of the pieces in our community that support um, and affect the on entrepreneur's success. And the foundation wants to work specifically with all of those to help translate between the startup world and your world to find ways to support. And each of those play specific roles in that. And government... Um, as we've heard, seen in some ways today with Tech Week, um, those are some of the ways we do it. You can there's there's ways to get f public dollars, um, uh, but also things with looking proactively at issues with Uber and uh, Airbnb, things that um, you know maybe those are bigger tech companies, but really sends a message message to the country and world that we're open for business and we want to welcome innovation and technology to Kansas City. Yeah. That's right. And I mean, just a, a summary note about the foundation's vision and goal is that there are amazing efforts and organizations, initiatives that are happening right now in Kansas City. And basically what we want to do is kind of be the force multiplier for that already existing collective impact. And we think we can take, Kansas, take this ecosystem a little bit further and get there a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of looking at the specific impact of, of the efforts we've seen already that we now are beginning to articulate, as you've seen already in a couple, you know, Tech Week had it, we saw it with the village, is this job creation element. Um, in just a year, with 10 companies, they've seen a 20% increase. We've seen in the village companies, in this kind of loose collective of entrepreneurs that support each other, create over 100 jobs in less than four years. How do we multiply that out again? Yeah. Um, uh, we're seeing huge, I mean, we're, um, I often speak with students, and I have a slide that shows all the press, you know, talking about Kansas City being this place where millennials are flocking to live and work, and Casey's made the top ten list of all kinds of things about being up-and-coming startup community and entrepreneurial community. All of that is kind of stemming from this really collaborative, high-energy, early-stage community. Um, so fostering that and making that more is only going to help with the reputation of Kansas City to attract the talent that we all um, know is critical. And, and another thing, as you saw with the village, um, is it, it's, it's literally a tourist attraction. I mean, we, we literally are giving tours as if we're a museum to people that come in, hear about it. A lot of it's techies and students and, and economic development people, but it's literally a, a destination. Um, and again, thinking through how do we utilize that best as, as it really is a, a tourist attraction um, for Kansas City. And then finally is this unifying thing. I mean, uh, we do, we very actively, um, because of all these connections we've built, how do we link those people together? I mean, it's, it's 
multiple times a day, we're connecting people, we're making intros. Um, Senator uh, Pat Roberts came to the village two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and we brought together 15 people from all corners of the city to meet and discuss entrepreneurship with him. And that's a role that we do a lot, and we'd love to find a way to make, to do that even more. And just a quick note on the ga- on the gateway um, portion. Um, literally, as it's a tourist attraction, um, it's also making sure that those are, that are interested in plugging into this ecosystem get pointed into the right direction. So it's not just about coming to us and then they disappear and, and hey, good luck. We literally make sure that they know about Tech Week or they know about Launch KC or any like, list of organizations, initiatives that are happening. So um, a case study, just as we kind of tell you more about you know, how government can get involved, um, there in Reno, uh, there's an initiative called Startup Row. And interestingly enough, uh, we know kind of the, the creators of Startup Row, and they literally called it Startup Row because they heard about the Startup Village. And instead of the village, it was a row because it essentially took place on their downtown May Street. And it, you know, the, the city of Reno has been looking to kind of reinvent itself in some ways. And they found out that entrepreneurship through a grassroots initiative like The Village was a way to to really get involved and be a part of it. Um, And so once it it formed and the city caught wind of it, they not only said, hey, you know, we love what you do, good luck doing it, but they said, we need to be a part of this thing. We need to help champion this thing. Um, And so they did so through a number of initiatives. Um, You know, one of them was really just like, they threw up some banners. So they literally said, hey, let's make sure that this is known to visitors and locals that this is happening. Um, and it was just, you know, obviously not a very expensive initiative, but it gave a little credibility that, uh, hey, this is happening and we're ready to, to show, show it to the, to the city and visitors. Uh, another thing that they did, um, literally the city said, hey, we've got some uh, CDBG funds and we don't really know what to do with them. And so they turned to the Economic Development Council uh, of Reno and said, what do you suggest? <coughs> and this was the guys that we knew um, who had come to the village, and they proposed a uh, accelerator fund, um, you know, literally a fund where um, the city could put money into uh, emerging startups to get them to the next phase. Uh, and it's run for a couple years. I'm not sure it's still running because things shift and ebb, uh, but it had amazing success. And you can see some of the companies that uh, were funded through this program. But um, really just a case example of like the government jumping on board. So, so a couple things kind of specifically, and, and this is just the start of a conversation, but brainstorming on some of the things that, that you know, uh, ways to support. I mean, obviously there's always money, you know, just finding ways to, you know, one of the things that, that we've thought a lot about is um, ultimately people's jobs need to be to do this work. And it's exciting to hear the new VP of entrepreneurship at Kaufman say one of his goals is to make startup community building a, a profession, right? Something that's a part of the economic development continuum. And it's really cool to see so many of these efforts that other cities around the country and world as an example of what that looks like, they're using Kansas City as a model. I know Jacksonville specifically wants to be Kansas City in terms of our startup community. Mm. Um, I talked with them. I talk with them regularly, so it's cool to see. But to, again, how do we make it people's jobs to do this? You know, um, another thing we've seen in, in um, D.C. They literally made an innovation district, uh, and actually, we we have an example here with the arts district. How do we use some of the same levers that really drove art in the crossroads to drive innovation and startup activity in in maybe in the village area or in other parts of the city? But it, there's multiple case studies, and and we can share those. Um, you know, something else just. A resolution. We we looked up the uh, Midtown plan. Midtown Plaza um, area development plan. Yeah, and uh, there's oh, nothing. <laughs> yeah, there's Don't nothing. Join yeah. us after <laughs> council this afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it? <laughs> um, but there there's nothing in there specifically addressing the the area right around the village. Mm-hmm. Um, it's most of it's towards the plaza and, and east. So again, maybe there's a little piece in there that specifically calls out that area, or maybe there's something specific. But again. Just, just ideas, and, and it's more on you guys to understand what tools and levers you can pull. Mm-hmm. Can pull, And then finally, and this is the easiest one, is get involved in little ways. Come to Tech Week. Um, as you'll see on the next slide, we'd love to have you down to the village. Just show you it. Sit down, see, see what it looks like, and have a conversation about it. Um, it's cool that it is by state. 
right? It's something that Casey Moe and Casey K, Kansas and Missouri can both agree is good. Um, is there a way to uh, kind of strengthen that in some way? Yeah. So, um, and quick note on that uh, Midtown Plaza area development. I know that there's a couple developers, which is why you're having the committee. As a, as a West Plaza resident, I say stick to your decision of staying with the plan. <laughs> so I had to say it. Um, so again, uh, uh, kind of on that getting involved piece, um, if you haven't heard of Startland News, um, I'd recommend following it, subscribing to it. It's free. Um, but um, two full-time reporters just cover innovation and entrepreneurship in Kansas City. Um, and Bobby Birch actually wrote for the Business Journal as the editor-in-chief of that. Um, so he does a great job um, in, terms of, in, um, in terms of events and things to stay plugged in on. Forward KC, that calendar actually uh, is pulled into uh, Startland News. So if you follow Startland, you'll f you follow that. And they actually curate a weekly events update. And then finally, I just say, if you're down, um, let's get a time set up for the village where you can see it. And we can talk, again, more specifically where you have some of the background. You can see it, smell it, feel it, uh, walk it, and, and kind of talk about um, what we might be able to do. Yeah. And so, yeah, now we'd like to open it up to kind of any questions you might have. We could, of course, talk on and on, <coughs> but um, we want to take this dialogue where you guys see it most appropriate. Well, Thank you for the presentation. This was really, really informative. Um, and before I go any further, I was remiss in not introducing um, our councilwoman from the 5th District, uh, Alicia Kennedy. <laughs> no, I'm for my tardy today. Oh, no, 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 oh, you, no. You made it for the good part. I so. did. Yeah, absolutely. This is, it's absolutely. all good, though. It's yeah, all good. No, I That's know. Exactly we work right. closely with Drew and Rick and Mike. So, uh, I have one quick question. Give yeah. me the boundaries of uh, Tech Village. Yeah, so... Um, I know you we had a map, but I couldn't quite. Yeah, sorry. Um, okay. So, you know, it, it, again, we've kind of got an outer core and an inner sure. core. Uh -huh. um, the outer core stretches 39th Street, kind of goes along, um, you know, Brush Creek and, and a, along Ward Parkway and Shawnee Mission Parkway and then up Mission Road. Um, okay. You can see, of course, the majority of activities happening within that inner core. Uh -huh. um, and if you zoom in, you would see a number of properties. And that's just kind of like, uh, what do we got, 43rd, you know, all the way to 47th. Um, and I think that's Rainbow over to uh, Fairmont or something like that. Okay. Um, and the reason that we have that inner core and outer core is because what we've discovered with startup communities uh, and microcosms like this is mm -hmm. density matters. Yeah. Sure. Um, sure. You've got to have them close to one another. Sure. Yeah. So if we're going, if we're driving down, mm. um, where do we start? I mean, who do we? <laughs> Good question. So um, the center point is 45th and State Line. Okay. Um, you'll see, you know, I think a few uh, buildings to the uh, north is Village Square, okay. which is kind of the, the, the place that it all happens. Uh, and that's a co-working and event space. Uh, you'll see a big sign on the top. It's the old American Beauty Salon. Okay. Uh, but that's a good place to come knock on the door and make yourself right at home. Okay. Great. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah, and um, we actually have a small event space in there. So if we ever wanted to host a kind of a round table or anything, I mean, that's where we hold everything where we do with Senator Roberts. Mm -hmm. It'd be, and we could absolutely do something if we wanted to, even like have this committee meeting there and we bring in some sure. select people from the community. Um, be happy to host and organize that. Okay. And you straddle the state line there yep. somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah so. state line goes right down. <coughs> literally right down the middle. Okay. Yeah. Okie doke. Yeah. Questions by the committee? Uh, Councilman Taylor. Thank you. Yeah, great report, and uh, keep up the good work on it. The uh, question I've got is, on, I know we've talked in the past about uh, possible zoning changes. Mm -hmm. uh, you've now had a few more years to kind of see what specific things you might have in mind. Can you maybe talk about that a little bit? What would what would be helpful now that you have several years under your belt of yeah uh, this being established? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you I know, think, I think oh. yeah, just Adam, this is a conversation we had a while back, and yeah. I don't know if the yeah, I'll, I'll start and you yeah, can yeah. chime in. Yeah. Um, so you know, entrepreneurs, startups operating in the village tend to either be in a house, right, residentially zoned, or a commercial space. Sometimes a mixed space as well. Mic the commercial or mixed space is not a problem. Um, you know, m sometimes maybe parking becomes an issue because they've grown big, but, you know, operating in those facilities is not a problem. It's the residential um, where we start to see the, the zoning gets into, into question. Um, so um, entrepreneurs, you know, the, the very early stage, they might actually want to live and work in the same place. Mm -hmm. They're at that point in their uh, yeah. startup journey that it's okay. 
there's other startups who have decided or who are at a level where they might have lived somewhere else. They might live somewhere else in Kansas City, and they just want to operate, you know, where the other entrepreneurs are. In that situation, a house doesn't really fit. If somehow with an innovation district we could, you know, relax those zoning regs and say, hey, in in this small area or in this area, um, a house can be used where you travel to and from. Uh, your your place of residence, but you work here. Now, of course, we'd say you can't have an open shop, you can't have customers coming to and fro. You're literally just going in there to work, you park, you're a good community member. Um, so so something like that. I don't know if you have anything else. Yeah, to we've had a lot of interactions as, as our conversations, especially on the KCK side, which is Google Fiber um, was on the KCK side of State Line nine months before the Missouri side. So we kind of it fired up there initially. Um, there they have a special use permit process kind of on a house by house basis um, that um, before we realize the importance of like neighborhood relations um, <laughs> that kind of got ahead. Yeah, I know for sure. Um, I mean, as you know, we were volunteers just doing stuff. It was really exciting. And the next thing we know, neighbors are mad at us. But, um, you know, so we, we dealt a lot with the permitting, uh, special use permit side um, on or on the Kansas side. On the Missouri side, um, we had a couple um, small startup companies that wanted to work at one of the houses right off of state line, um, but the, the housing or the permitting or the zoning didn't allow for it and therefore has kind of kept, I mean, several um, entrepreneurs from kind of being right in that area. Mm-hmm. And again, it's not about like let's let's screw the zoning and just say you know anyone that wants to come and right. and work there can but how can we think creatively to to make it um, more accessible because we've lost three houses that had entrepreneurs living and or working in them mm-hmm. because th- zoning, because right. of zoning issues. Okay. What do you mean lost them? What do you mean? So yeah, go ahead. So on the Kansas side specifically, when neighbors kind of got upset and KCK. Um, didn't really come to the table and say, all right, we're, let's get creative on how, on how to work around this. The landlords who were excited to be a part of it and, you know, and, and um, support it when it wasn't like getting a little tense. But as soon as it got tense and the city didn't come to um, them and say, all right, we'll work through this. We want you here. Let's figure this out. When that didn't happen, the landlord said, we don't want to get in a, in a battle like this. And so they just sold the house to a single family. Mm-hmm. Um, so on, yeah, and on the Missouri side, a good example would be um, there's a house literally on Bell, so one street over from State Line, um, nicknamed the GEW House for Global Entrepreneurship Week, and that's because Jonathan Ortmans, who's a Kaufman fellow and does a lot of great things with Kaufman, and actually the creator of Global Entrepreneurship Week, wanted to support the village and literally bought a house to house startups. Mm-hmm. Um, had a few startups in it for a year or so, mm-hmm. and then because of the zoning regs, we had a, two, a couple startups who said, well, we would work out of it, but we can't live there because we're already doing our thing here. Mm-hmm. And so it fell to just you know regular renters, which is still good for the community, sure. um, but now it's back on the table. Those renters are moving out. We have the opportunity to get startups in there, but because of regulations, you know, Jonathan's a little bit hesitant on how it plays out. Question. Councilwoman. Thank you. So I understand that the focus <coughs> here in, in where it all began is Startup Village. Are you guys open to other areas of, of the city to consider for um, co-work spaces? Yeah. So, I mean, you're exactly right. The village, in a way, is a big living, co-working, you know, unique model. Um, the city of KCK, Unified Government, actually said, hey, could you pick this thing up and put it to downtown Kansas City, Kansas? And we're like, eh, it's not quite that easy. There's a number of components that come into play. But um, interestingly, we've had a number of, of, of visitors, civic li- leaders, who have said, how do we bring a village to our city? And there are certainly ways that I think we could get creative to, to extend the village or create another village in various areas. Um, but there's a number of components. I, I asked because I just saw an article um, the other day. It was just yesterday I shared it, and it was a uh, dorms for adults, for millennials. And so it's a co-working oh, space. Uh, but on uh, one, like a couple levels, but then on a couple levels above that, they've um, converted a floor to micro units, like we talked about before. Some micro units, I think they're like 300 square feet. Hmm. And then, uh, which is like a little kitchenette, bathroom, yeah. and your sleeping area. But then a community kitchen, yeah. entertainment area. So you have the two separate areas, but it kind of creates an environment. But obviously the space it would take for that is probably not available in the area that you guys are currently in. Mm-hmm. But something like that, 
that's so, unique. So one of the things, and literally we were talking about this morning, is Albuquerque. They have this area of town they're trying to figure out what to do with and has, a, has some money. Um, so he wor- met with some of their, what, just economic some, development? No, actually, they're just entrepreneurs living there, but they have a good tie-in with economic development, and they just relayed this story to me. Yeah, and, and they are interested in... Creating a village. Uh, creating a village and, and hiring us to consult with them. Long story short, um, what we've learned in the village, we can, it absolutely applies across the city and can be in different areas in different forms. And that's really where the village is the village, but the foundation really wants to just empower people and other you know, the whole community to be better. And so if there are opportunities, we've, we've had some conversations um, around that choice grant. Um, for the Northeast community, um, and they have 4.5 million of that to be critical community improvement. And so we've been involved with them to think through, is there a creative way to kind of foster innovation and entrepreneurship through that grant? Now, there's a bunch of politics in play, and it doesn't look like we're going to be able to really fully capitalize on the opportunity. But I think there's a lot of ways like that. And I know 18th and Vine with the Lincoln Building and um, with, um, you know, uh, uh, what the other one, the baseball player, I can't think of his name. <laughs> yeah, Buck O'Neill, um, that there's conversations there. So, I mean, honestly, we'd love to help kind of just bring in some of the perspective we've gained uh, to help kind of say, here's what made the village so vibrant, um, and how do we take those lessons and apply them in other parts of the city? And, and I think 18th and I, I know there's a lot of efforts talking around that being an innovation center and hub. Um, it absolutely can be, but there's certain things that need to happen, and we've learned a lot of those lessons. And just to quickly expand upon Adam's point is, you know, we've come here, we've thrown a few examples of how maybe KCMO can support these efforts, but we exist to support you as well. So in this vein, like having a conversation about other innovation districts, whatever it is, like we are at the w- ready and willing to meet with you uh, to discuss further, because it's really all about conversation and imagining what's possible. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, just, yeah, I would like to have uh, more discussion, but a couple points for you I think that would be helpful, too, from our perspective. We, uh, there are two issues that come up, uh, have come up quite a bit in the last several years in neighborhoods uh, related to zoning where we do have protections in place for a, a reason. I think you kind of alluded to one of them, which is uh, the call is goes like this. Uh, we've got a person who started a home-based business, which we encourage, but it's grown so large now they have employees actually coming over and parking in the neighborhood, which we uh, have protections in place for. And uh, sometimes the small business owners don't necessarily want to hear that, but uh, the neighbors around them like that protection because it preserves the, the mm-hmm. peacefulness of the neighborhood. So that's one of the issues we got to be aware of if we're looking at doing this in other parts of the city. The uh, other issue, that, the call that comes up, especially out south, we've had this uh, for probably a couple decades an issue is we have uh, we have certain requirements how many people can live in a house uh, and that that's uh, for a lot of reasons for neighborhoods to protect <coughs> having way too much traffic in and out traffic and all that uh, that's something I know enforcement uh, we've had to uh, look at so that's another area to kind of look at because I know that would fit in you're gonna have multiple people potentially in a startup house but having said that I think if you your idea of, of having a, uh, a a district that's specific that everyone knows going into it, including the surrounding neighborhood, and people sign off on it. We could have rules that are more innovative and more uh, less restrictive to encourage this activity. My question for you, long-winded um, co- opening comment, but the uh, uh, in other parts of the city, uh, you mentioned uh, that there has to be, uh, uh, I think, density. Um, so this this location made sense. If, if you had a neighborhood, because we're looking at what we can do around the Cerner project, because I think you're going to see a lot of uh, things happening uh, in South Kansas City mm-hmm. in the new uh, campus there, outside of the campus, uh, would there be any benefit to looking at a, a, a district there? We have a lot of neighborhoods that are very uh, uh, sm- smaller houses that are c- close together that would be similar to what, what, you, what mm-hmm. attracted you to this location. They're bigger houses, too. Yeah. There are, but there are also, uh, I think, some uh, ideal neighborhoods maybe uh, for something like this out south. Would there be uh, other things that you look for uh, that would make sense now that you have this experience with the village here that you would need as infrastructure, I guess? I mean, I, I would say, I mean, 
abs- I mean, without knowing that area, yeah. and anything's a possibility. I mean, some of the things that make um, the village, you know, kind of unique <coughs> and things is it, it is walkable, right? There are re- there is retail and restaurants within walking, which is definitely a, a piece of it. Um, I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of pieces to it. So, long story short. Right. It's absolutely on the table, but just need to look at the circumstances, and everything's going to look different in different parts of the city. But it's kind of understanding that you know the other um, the other thing to think about is is you know being out in more of a suburb, it's probably going to attract a different type of entrepreneur, right? Where you know kind of the stereotypical more you know millennial type wants to be in a walkable urban setting is going to you know, attract more downtown and in midtown where maybe, you know, more of the, you know, middle-aged, whatever, that has a family and wants more of the suburban life. Maybe that's, maybe that is absolutely a possibility, but it's more of, we need to kind of look at the area and, and, and see what that looks like. Yeah, I think we, we would welcome the opportunity to talk further totally. about that idea. And I just to comment on a few of your comments. Um, so uh, Adam actually and myself, but he really stewarded it, put together a manifesto when we were having conversations with the unified government um, to address some of the things that you mentioned, which is how big can a startup be in there? How much parking does it take? And we really tried to work through an agreeable, um, you know, an agreeable situation, right, um, between the unified government, ourselves, and the residents and literally got signed off by ourselves and the residents were like, we get it, makes sense, we love it. Um, but the conversations kind of fell through. But we would love to have that similar conversation and see where it leads. But a, a tangible thing to take away from you know, pre-village to post-village is crime. Now, I can't share any data metrics with you, but I re- when we first moved to the village, we would hear all the time on the neighborhood groups and whatnot, oh, house got broken into, oh, this is happening, that's happening, right? All of a sudden, you have a village and you have activity during the day. No longer were these houses empty or the streets empty because they were at work. Yet entrepreneurs walking around and we were giving tours and stuff, mm-hmm. crime reduces significantly. And so these are some of the, eff- some of the things that happens when a community is alive and well sure. during day and night. Yeah? And I know we're, we're about out of time, but um, the last thing, you brought up a couple of uh, specific issues mm-hmm. with zoning and we've been pretty deep into those on the Kansas side we've brought it up and actually talked with Rick a couple times um, you know on the Missouri side not not real um, aggressively or anything but I think I think the biggest thing and in, in where um, where we can really make some progress is if we come to the table with this is good we want it we're committed to making it work mm-hmm. um, where oftentimes, and this is where KCK started and we started working past it, they came to the, to the side of, um, we got complaints, you need to fix them, mm-hmm. right? As opposed to, let's figure this out, it's yeah, good. Exactly. And, that, and that's, I think, and, and I, I've um, chatted a couple times with you, Scott, and um, I think, you know, coming at it from, we want this, let's figure this out, I think we can really make some progress, and whether it's specific to the village or just an approach to take in other other opportunities throughout the city. Sure, mm-hmm. that's good. Great, yeah. good so. comments. All good comments, uh, Council. Yeah, I uh, <coughs> sat here, of course, <coughs> uh, listened to the conversation, and um, just met, wanted to make sure I added my voice to our discussion. I think yeah. my colleagues have asked and also offered. Uh, very good suggestions and comments and I think you've even touched on a number of things that um, I was sort of interested in in terms of how we can you know branch off to other areas you talked about 18th Divine Buckle Neal Educational Center which we are looking at doing a number of um, startups inside that facility Mm -hmm. but then of course the uh, BEU building which is down on 18th Divine and so much more so um, I wanted to at least say that and then uh, applaud you all for what you're doing I think uh, we often say and what always excites me about uh, this committee is that it takes businesses, uh, small businesses, a small dream, a vision, or what have you, uh, to help make our city run. Uh, and there's so many in- individuals who have uh, ideas and want to uh, branch off and you know work for themselves, and they don't know what to do half the time. And mm-hmm. so uh, it's these type of things that are so important to keep our city thriving uh, the way it does. And so I just wanted to make sure I... Uh, spoke up and said something so you don't leave saying that guy didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I no, we, we appreciate it. Well, and, and honestly, uh, the, to, to that point a little bit, I mean, 
Matthew and I always, we kind of talk about like Kansas City is our startup, right? Like that's how we think of it. There's a great opportunity. There's a great foundation. There's a lot of energy around it. But how do we build a great city? How do we build a city that really attracts the, and, and that's that's how we think about it. You know, and for us, we, we didn't anoint ourselves leaders of the village. That just happened. We were there and we're very civically, you know, passionate about our city and all that. And I'll just, you know, say like, we have people from around the country are wanting to tap into what we've learned. Sure. How can we be of most use for you um, for the rest of our city? I mean, 18th yeah. Mile, I, I know that what we've learned in the village can absolutely apply there. Um, and, and how can we make sure we're utilizing all the resources we have and experience we have to, to, to do things the best we can? Well, I don't think that will be hard. I think uh, we can utilize. I, I foresee little villages all over the city, yeah. you know, and uh, talk about attracting uh, outsiders. Um, once you do that and and you get the reputation of, you know, the startup start here, um, I think, and, and the city focuses on that and makes it a priority, then um, uh, we're in business. Yeah. Um, Councilwoman Kennedy, did you have anything else that you needed? No. Okay. Councilor Reed okay. summed it up really nicely. Okay. If, well, can I make one last comment just before you certainly. hit the gavel? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so a good example of another city doing amazing things, mm -hmm. and you can look it up or we can talk about it, Rainy Street uh, in Austin, just Austin, on the outskirts yeah. of downtown Austin. Austin's always at the top of the list. And they're actually number one on that Kaufman yeah. Index report as having the best uh, startup ecosystem. But you read that story, and we can tell you more. It's a pretty fascinating story. And then last but not least, if you want to <laughs> have a good read, uh, check out this book. Actually, we all have a copy you of do. that book. <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brad was a little harsh We're towards off. government in this yeah. book, and he's actually rescinded it a bit in his follow-up and said, eh, I wasn't quite yeah. right in that. <laughs> so, not quite as bad as he but I, I'd love to prove him wrong. And the author yeah. of the book. Yeah. You know, but um, he realizes that government plays an important role sure. uh, in sure. many ways. So you, you figure that out eventually. You yeah, know? That's right. That's right. <laughs> you can't escape us. Yeah. Well, thanks so uh, well, much for having and us. And the neighborhoods. Too. Yeah. Uh, this this, is a great, this has been that. a great discussion, guys. I really appreciate you coming down and uh, would like to continue uh, talking and um, see where we can go with this. Fantastic. Um, love you to have you over. Abs oh, I'll be over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to thank uh, Artavia for being our clerk today. We appreciate it. And um, if there's no other business to come before the committee, then we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.